everybody, hello and welcome as always, I'm Sean. This is In The Mix, episode number 52 of our Pentagon Challenge. If you watch one episode a week for a year, you'd be caught up. That was a weird sentence. It sounded better in my head, but it's come out a little bit. Maybe pre-game nerves, because in today's episode, we've got a Copa Libertadores final. Hopefully, one of those trophies that you guys can see over there will be able to put in the trophy cabinet, say we've completed it, and make the jump to the final continent of Europe. There's a whole bunch of stuff on the line. We've got a bunch that we want to recap and go through. Let's jump straight in and see how we've gone on. Right, so to close it out first and foremost, if you look over on that far left-hand side, the league table, River Plate sitting comfortably top of the division. We're eight points clear with a game in hand. Still just that one defeat to bottom of the table, Godoy Cruz, which I cannot let go of. But otherwise, our league form has been very good. We've pretty much won every game since we last saw you guys because it was only actually like a couple of games. It's two games, effectively. Um, a Copa Argentina semi-final against San Lorenzo. We now set ourselves up to play... Tolerez in the Copa Argentina, depending on how long this episode runs, we might bring that to you guys in this episode as well because it keeps us on track for potentially an unprecedented quadruple. Only shows the treble, but we did win the Super Cup. It just kind of counts towards the previous season, even though as far as I'm concerned, it's the same season, if that makes sense. So not just one chance at silverware, two chances at silverware, but the big one, the one that we care the most about, that is the Copa Libertadores final against Flamengo. Now, they are, of course, one of the biggest Brazilian teams. They're also, if you're a couple of years into a save, like one of the real wonder kid factories in Football Manager each and every season. So even if we just go with their squad now, they've got two wonder kids, but they've got a bunch of other talent in their first team who are 18, 19, 20 years of age. That potentially, I think, could very quickly become wonder kid talent as well. This guy, Patrick, uh, Talo Vigo, Leonardo Bruno, who's out on loan at the moment. Two star players with five star potential. Giovanni Fernando was previously a wonder kid. Paulo was a wonder kid. Atherson was a wonder kid. They've had a variety of talent that's come through and really been like elite level kind of wonder kid status uh, throughout the South American region. And even if we look at their like transfer history, this guy, Gia Vitor, 20 year old wonder kid, got picked up by Tottenham. So he would have been on the books with them at the start of the season. Igor Thompson. 25-year-old Brazilian that came through them, made the jump across to Monaco. So they've got a hell of a lot of talent. And it looks like every season they're able to pay fairly decent money for players to bring them in based on perpetually being able to kind of like sell talent on. Here's a guy that they've sold directly to, Dinamo Zagreb, who was also at Porto briefly. Season before, selling people into Spain and Portugal. Season before that, sending players into North America. Direct transfers to Chelsea. This Wanderson Lorenko guy, obviously come through their academy, still only 24, but like a five-star left midfielder who looks to be an absolute beast. So like they've got a production cycle going on. Their, their academy and youth prospects each and every season are absolutely fantastic. So if you're looking for a club that you maybe want to kind of like continue scouting or scoping out for good regen talent, good one to kid talent coming through, like Flamengo is always one of my first ports of call to go and see what they want. They've even got like elite level center backs playing in Brazil, which to me is bonkers. This Cao Cesar, I think is how you'd say that an elite level player playing in South America, you'd think he would have been scooped up at some point or another by a European side. So for that reason, and for you know a lot of other reasons, their continued success as well, I do view them as being probably the biggest club in South America. Um, and even if you look at the ability of their current squad and some of the guys they've got on the bench and everything, like they've got incredible players that would walk into our team. So definitely the challenge has been set. It's a, it's a little bit daunting. We have played these guys quite a few times as well. If you look at previous results from when the leagues were loaded in, which basically kind of kicks off from 2021, is that right? 2021, they knocked us out in the semi-final. 2022, they beat us in the final. Second round, first leg, River eliminated them in 2024. 2031, so a bit of a gap there between playing Flamengo, knocked them out again. Recent history, really, since like we've been involved with the club, which is like the last two seasons, we've had an up and down record. So both 3-2 victory and a 3-0 defeat in uh, Libertadores Group G back in 2039. And then in a friendly at the start of last season, we beat them 3-2 as well. And that was really just kind of measure how our squad was doing against arguably like the best team in the region. Shouldn't really be any surprise by that instance that like Flamengo's name appears a ridiculous amount of times in the Copa Libertadores triumphs as well. They went on a run of seven consecutive victories in that competition, uh, which we actually broke, but then they won it an eighth time in 2029, nine and 10 in 2034, 2035. So they've had now like a five year gap, really the longest gap that they've had actually between winning the competition since this database got loaded in. So they'll be desperate to try and get that title. And we just kind of have to hope that our team can kind of get through it and that our squad can kind of patch together. We've got one injury concern that we have to worry about, really, which is Alberto Caro has got a knock and he's out for four days, which is disappointing. I think I'm going to start Munifo. I don't really want to risk him because you can see here, fit, failed fitness test not recommended to be selected. So that's really, otherwise it's a full strength lineup. We actually get even Carlos back in as well 
which is a bit harsh on Mateus because he was excellent and he scored some important goals for us. But for some reason, Carlos is no longer cup tied for the final, which makes no sense to me, given that he was for the rest of the competition. But it does mean we can effectively get like our first choice 11 out there. So I'm just kind of really hopeful that we can continue what has been excellent form in the regular season in Argentina, carry that on into this continental triumph. And really, I, I desperately want to get to Europe before the end of the FM21 cycle. So arguably, I think the biggest game that we've played today, not to put it too much pressure on it. We are going to go from the off, but the lineup is Suarez, of course, in goal, Medina, Magia, and Garavana as our back three. Magia back to full form and fitness. Uh, playing as the little bearer at the base of that defense. Even Carlos, as we've said, will play as the DLP. A bit harsh on Mateus because I think he's been excellent in our continental campaign. Uh, Rojas is the right wing back. Munafo is the left wing back, both playing as those inverted wing backs on attack. Oriol on the right wing, who's been excellent. Tonico, who's dropped off a little bit in terms of star rating, but has still had a relatively decent season. 7.24 average rating for the year is nothing to be looked down upon. Antonio Bridos will play as the number 10. The Enganch and Jesus Moya will lead the line as the advance forward. We'll have a quick look at their lineup as well as it comes up here in the pregame. But really, I just want to get off to a good start and a good performance. Like It won't destroy me if we have to do a third season in South America, but I feel like we're really close and we were very unfortunate last season it would be super unfortunate for us to fall at the final stage here all right five straight wins for us decent little run of form but if we look at their lineup they've also had four straight wins and i think the draw that they had as well was also in the libertadores last round if it lines up roughly with our fixtures they're playing a 4-2-3-1 which we've done okay against quite a few teams play that shape and formation I think there's the challenge with Flamengo is more around how good some of their players actually are. Lopez here has come flying forward. If we concede within a minute, I'll be in trouble. And then Emerson thankfully heads over the bar. Really, just could, if he had got that header down, we'd have been a goal down inside a minute, which would have been devastating. But to be fair, I've done that to a lot of teams throughout the course of this series. So it's going to happen to me at some point. Clayton here with the throw in finds Emerson. Juarez with the ball into Alex Augusto, who's offside. Thankfully, the linesman didn't move. They did find the back of the net, but the linesman did not shake at any point. I'm going to throw a demand more shouting because we've not started particularly well. And I just kind of want to try and pick everybody up so that we get on top of the game or at least start to get a handle on defending them. They've got a goal. Victor Lopez, 10th goal of the season. Talis Magno, inside 15 minutes, we're falling a goal behind. And to be honest, I feel like it's kind of been coming. They've had three highlights in quick succession to start the game. And all that kind of like bright hope I had for the future is starting to dissipate quickly. But we have got a highlight here in possession. Tonico with the switch out to Oriol. Wide right-hand side. It's closed down well. Britos can put it back in. Goes back to Yvonne Carlos. Now Munifo into Tonico. Moya. Good little exchange of passing. Find Oriol. And then I think the drive was going wide. But Luis Claudio in goal pushes it out for the corner. Brutos to take towards back stick. Moya was there, but it's cleared away by the defense. And if uh, Moya's going to get matched up against that KR Caesar guy that we looked at before the game, I don't think he's going to win that much out of the air. A big challenge. Oh, well, there's a highlight here. Let's get to half time before I worry too much about what tactical changes we might need to make. Munifo in possession. Tries to strike on his weaker foot, and you could tell because it kind of just piddled out for a goal kick. Throwing down the right. So we have at least responded. A couple of highlights here starting in our possession. Brutos. Across to Rojas, switch out to Tonico, into Moya, tries to drive himself. Now Rojas, wide right area, I've lost possession, Brutos give it away. They go long out of their defensive line, which should allow us to recover. Rojas, wide right, can he get a good ball back into the box? He's gone down, and the referee's potentially going to have a look and see if it's a penalty. He's getting gathered around by the penalty. He's just going straight to VR review. It means he's not run to the sideline. We've been given a penalty, all right? So it's going to be Brutos to take. All right, fingers, toes, arms, eyes, ears crossed, and he sent the keeper the wrong way. It's an excellent penalty from Britos. And look, I've just said that, but now we're going to check it out in three dimensions and find if it is an excellent penalty. Keeper didn't really go the right direction. It's not a bad pen, actually. Low into the bottom corner. That's what we need. And we restore parity, and I've thrown a demand more shared out there. Maybe we just needed to fall behind early to like kind of wake ourselves up a bit. We've got Tonico, Britos, and Moya all with uh, decent ratings so far. So hopefully... Our front four is getting the advantage against their back four. Britos here from the corner. It's towards Tonico, and he's powered the header home. 12th goal of the season for him. Like I said, he's dropped off in terms of star quality at the moment in this match or over the course of this season. Had his head turned a little bit by the likes of Chelsea, Tottenham, Arsenal, Sevilla, a bunch of teams that bid on him. We've kept a hold of him, and potentially he's just given us a lead in this Libertadores final. So at halftime, 2-1 up. 13 shots, 5 on target, 1.79 XG, and 46% possession. 
for Flamengo, four shots, two on target, 4.43 XG and 54% of the ball. I'm going to go into the dressing room now. This is where I'm kind of not worried, but intrigued. I'm going to say I'm happy with the performance so far. Keep it up. Do I make a tactical adjustment and go possession-based in the second half? Just to try and play a little bit deeper, invite some of their pressure onto us, and then hopefully have more space to counter in behind. That's that's the idea of my mindset. Let's give it a go. And if this goes absolutely pear-shaped in the opening 15 minutes, we've still got time to make subs and changes and tactical tweaks. Suarez with the ball forward. Oriol will flick it on. Cesar recovers for Flamengo. And plays it up the line to Lopez. Now Vinicius, the left back in possession. Oriol with a good little press there. Just stops the ball forward being played. Now Talos Magno. Carlos was there with him. Emerson on the overlap here on the right. Just stand him up, boys. We've gone through him. Munifo's just given away, I think, a penalty. Which might mean that we have to try and get some of our players out there. Penalty review. They've been given one as well at the same end. Talos Magno to take. And keeper goes the right way, but it's a good penalty, to be fair. 19th goal of the season for him. We'll check it out here in three dimensions. But 49 minutes played. They have got their equalizing goal. It's a good pen, to be fair. And Suarez, to be fair to him, went the right way. Tried to get up to the top corner. It just had too much pace and power on it for him to catch it back up. Is that because I made the tactical tweak? These are the sort of things that haunt me and that I lay awake at night thinking about. If I had stayed attacking, would we be on top of the game still? All right, head over heart. We're just going to go based on condition. Britos needs to come off then. Zaragoza will come on for him. Oriol will come off for Alvarez. And then the last highlight that we've got, Munifo is going to come off and we're going to get Caro out there. I know he's not ready to play. I know he was recommended to not be selected, but he's very, very good and he's been excellent in that role. So we should at least try and get him some game time in the final. Just strap him up as much as you can. There's a throw in here on the left-hand side for them. Rojas with the header away. No one really closes down the second ball for us. Rossi, reverse pass to Emerson down that left-hand side. Hopefully, they're not immediately going to just identify Emerson as being able to beat Caro in those 1v1s. Magno in possession. Corner's cleared away by the first man. Just stand him up. Medina closes down well. Tonico might get a chance to spring a counter-attack here as well. Cuts inside. He's got man over on the far side. Looks for Zaragoza. Finds Moya, and he can't get the drive on target. If it had been, the keeper was miles away from it, but just beyond the far post. Highlight here, Clayton to take. Now Wellington Bruno, Talos Magno in possession. Garavano closes it down well. Zaragoza maybe could have gotten there, but it's back with Flamengo again. Overlap here, Clayton is committed forward. Emerson in possession. Zaragoza wins it back in a great spot. Now Tonico's got Moya to the left. He's going to drive himself. He's got a lot of work to do wide left area. He goes a strike from a wide area. I thought they patched that out of the game. We're going to throw a demand more shout out here with into the last 10 minutes. And we're on top in terms of like XG, clear-cut chances, everything but possession. But four additional minutes of rocketed by it very, very quickly, and we are going to extra time. All right, so at the end of 90, 21 shots, six on target, 2.55 XG, two clear-cut chances, 48% possession for River Plate. For Flamengo, 10 shots, five on target, 1.7 XG, one clear-cut chance, 52% possession. I feel like they came back into it a little bit more when we made that tactical adjustment. So I'm just going to tell everybody that they can still improve and that I've got faith in them. And then tactically, let's go back to this more aggressive instruction. But then can we make one more sub? So that would be awesome. I'm going to leave Tonico out there, but I think we're going to take off Ivan Carlos. And we'll get Mateus an appearance because he's been fantastic for us this season, covering while Ivan Carlos was cup-tied. There's a highlight here, throwing on the right for Flamengo. And that extra man at the base of the midfield is going to get a lot of possession here in the late game. Suarez comes out and claims, now can we counter-attack going the opposite direction? Zaragoza's there. Moya was there for the flick on potentially. Mateus has lost out possession in midfield. Alex Agosto, wide right, just needs to stand up and it's a great save from Suarez. That was a very, very good chance for Flamengo. If he had to look to the far corner, he would have just slowed, slid that one home. Elias Alvarez maybe here from the counter-attack. No, it's closed down. But the highlight continues. Long ball forward. Magia wins it back. Now Alvarez, back to Mateus, switches out to Tonico down the left. Caro, back to Zaragoza, the pass back to Medina is a little bit heavy. Now Mateus switches out to the right to Alvarez. Rojas to Alvarez. Mateus, Zaragoza goes to strike, and it's Luis Claudio in goal for Flamengo, just tipping that one over the bar. Zaragoza from the corner, to, looks towards back stick, which I don't think we've had a lot of success with throughout the course of this game. Tonico might get a chance to put it back in, but it's a good tackle from Herrera, puts it out for the throw. Positive signs, though, positive signs. We're going to throw a demand more shout out with a couple minutes remaining in the half. We've got a corner here as well. Garavano should reset, plays it out to Zaragoza on the left. 
ball towards Tonico, and I don't know if that actually hit the post or if Lewis Claudio saved it, but we put another shot on target that potentially we should have done a little bit better with. Caro in possession here. Looks to come forward down the left-hand side. Can he get a good ball back across towards back stick? He's found Alvarez and Caro, despite playing on pretty much one leg at the moment and now being dragged into additional time, has come up with a phenomenal assist. We'll check it out here in three dimensions. It's a great little run. Just nobody goes to him. Um, and Talos Magno and Rossi kind of get a little bit lost as to who's going to track him. And it's a good ball back across. And Elias Alvarez, on his not favoured left foot, just slams that one home at the far post. Keeper could do nothing about it. And now we've got a little bit of a lead to defend. I'm going to say start extra time, second half. We're not going to change anything tactically. We're just going to continue on. First highlight of the second half of extra time is in possession for them. And here they come down the left-hand side. Lopez has got the overlap there from Herrera. Wellington Bruno comes to join. Medina with a good header away. Now Zaragoza forward to Moya, who's been quiet. Sends it out wide right for Alvarez. Can he get a good ball back in the box? He goes to drive himself from the wide area. Should have just tried to slide that one back stick to see if Tonico could get there. We've got the set piece now. Garavana gets closed down, but Alvarez is offside. All right, 10 minutes remain. Oh, we've got an injury. Rojas is coming off for Alvarez. Can I make that sub? No, I can't. All right, how do I fix this tactically? Can Zaragoza do a job at inverted wing back? Kind of. Let's just ditch having a number 10 for the last 10 minutes and let's go demand more. I've kept us on attacking because we're down to 10. They've got a highlight here. Wellington Bruno, good header there from Medina. Now Caro. Medina should recover from the long ball forward. Mateus out to Zaragoza, filling in his right wing back. He's got a man on the overlap here with Alvarez. Finds him now, cuts inside, and he goes the drive from distance, which probably wasn't the right option. Never too early to head to the corner flag, lads. Two additional minutes. We've got a corner here. Short ball to Medina. He goes to strike himself. It's just beyond the far post. Two additional minutes to be added on. Please just play out and have the referee call the final whistle. He has indeed. And we've done it. We've added the Copa Libertadores to the title. 3-2 after extra time. Outstretched arms. Congratulations, lads. I'm happy with your performance. That is absolutely fantastic. Holy shit. I did not think we were going to get there after that early goal, that 15-minute goal. I thought they were going to blow us away and win like 4-0 or something devastating like that. River win the Copa Libertadores. So let's jump back into the welcome screen. We'll do this. We need to do this as early as humanly possible. I'm going to take out that color correction and have a look at that. Four of the five actually completed. But we've got more to come. So we've gone relatively quickly through that, even though it was extra time and everything. I might try and bring you guys the cup game as well. Um, we've got a whole bunch of stuff coming in here. Their coach is disappointed, who's Eduardo Vargas, the Chilean player. You might remember from their national team. Alvarez gets the Man of the Match award off the bench, which is impressive, an 8.0 match rating for him. Even Carlos is happy that we won the Copa Libertadores. The board are happy that we won it as well, three years ahead of schedule. We're making history at River. Marcello Gallardo labeled me a bona fide legend. He's the Man City manager who was previously manager at River Plate. That explains why he's done that. Maybe someone that we'll manage against in the next few seasons, hopefully. And we get ourselves back on the list of past winners for that competition. That is absolutely fantastic. All right, let's do the Copa Argentina final as well because I think that'll give you guys some additional value and potentially keeps us on track to do a treble this season. All right, just before we jump into that game, so there's a couple of individual awards for the Copa Libertadores I'll bring you guys as well. So um, Fernando De Caro from Boca won the player of the tournament. Tonico came third, 7.55 average rating. It's a little bit tricky because he played like 12 games as opposed to Caro who played eight and got an 8.10 match rating. Still impressive, but still, it's like, where were those eight games? If they were early in qualifying, of course he did. Um, 13 appearances, 13 goals, six assists for Tonico as well. He gets the uh, Golden Boot Award. So we're going to give him a little bit of love. And then players in the Dream 11 or the Dream Team. We've got Caro at left back, Garavano and Medina as two of the central defenders. Mateus at the base midfield. I didn't even start him in the final. Uh, Tonico on the left-hand side and Moya leading the line up top. A few Flamengo players in there as well. Juarez, Wellington Bruno, Clayton at right back. And Louis Claudio in goal as well. All right, jumping forward again, just the one change. Rojas is going to be out after picking up that injury four to seven weeks. So his season isn't done, but he definitely won't make the final. Caro still not fully fit, so I don't think I'm going to risk him. So going to have both of our backup fullbacks are effectively going to play this game, but we're going to go attacking from the off. I think we can beat Tolaris, um, and I did give the guys like three days off as well between these two games, just so that they would go and party and then not be super hungover uh, and not worry about it. Go out there and carry straight on for where you finished last match. I'm going to tell the defense I've got faith in them as well, just because if we can keep a clean sheet, that's half the job done. 
Tolera similarly playing a 4 2 3 1. We'll see if they give us the same defensive issues, but they aren't in as good a form. Two defeats in their last five, three wins for the other matches. And we're on the back of, I think, seven straight wins in all competitions, which is fantastic to see. But with games coming thick and fast, we're on a square pitch as well, which is ridiculous. Are we playing this at Tolera's home ground? I didn't even look. Ball back stick. Tonico with the flick on. Moya might come the other direction. Moya was very quiet in the last game as well. Oriol, cut back, finds Alvarez. We do manage to get it home. It's Tonico celebrating his uh, a Golden Boot Award, I guess, for the Copa Libertadores with a 13th domestic goal this season. Uh, Britos with a good ball out here towards Oriol. And we'll check out how this ball comes back in. He just kind of hangs it towards... Oh, no, Alvarez tries to put it in. It was potentially going in from Alvarez's strike, to be honest, but Tonico just makes sure of it on his wrong foot. And inside two minutes, we've got a goal up to get put maybe like one little pinky finger on the Copa Argentina title as well. Lara in possession here. Over to Caroga. Good win back there from Munifo. Reverse pass. Finds Brutus. It's going to get disallowed for offside, but still, lovely little exchange of passing. And inside 10 minutes, we are well and truly on top, it feels like. They've got a highlight. Why do I open my mouth sometimes? Thankfully, the header from that goal or that free kick sails over the crossbar. Suarez goes for a long ball forward from the resulting goal kick. And the highlight continues here. Ball into midfield. It's just hanging a little bit there. Oriol wins it back here. Bridos finds a reverse pass towards Moya. It's cut out by the defense. Oriol cuts inside, goes for the drive himself, well beyond the far post. Free kick here, Medina towards back stick. Oriol was there again. He's been quite busy in this half. Garavano, back to Ivan Carlos. Now Munifo reverse pass, finds Moya. It's going to get disallowed. I just kind of saw that linesman just wasn't moving. And Moya just hasn't had the greatest episode in terms of our chances created, but he's getting into good spots. I don't know if I should be super critical of him. And this is the challenge as well. Tonico and Moya, they've had their heads turned by these clubs in Europe that really want to pick them up. And I don't know if we'd pick them both up if we make the jump to Europe. We'd have to see what club we get to, but they're definitely capable of making that leap. At halftime, it's more level statistically than I thought it would be. Uh, Toleris, eight shots, five on target. Only 0.6 XG, but 61% of the ball. Uh, River Plate, eight shots, five on target. 1.07 XG and 39% possession. So despite them having the majority of the ball, we are effectively just kind of cruising along nicely. We've had a few chances as well. I'd love to get a second goal just to give us a little bit of buffer. So as we know, anything can happen after a halftime team talk. Switch out here for Toleres. Alvarez wins it back in a great spot. Sends it up the line to Oriol, who's picked up a bit of a knock. We'll have a look at subs in a few moments. Cut back here towards Tonico, and he gets two bites at the cherry and can only clip the base of the post as it heads out for the goal kick. And we're at the hour mark, so we're going to hit pause here. Just going to sort by condition. Oriol's knock means he's not doing that great. We'll bring on Alvarez, who's fresh off a man of the match performance in a Copa Libertadores final. Britos is going to come off for Zaragoza. And then Carlos is going to come off for Mateus as well. We're just going to go with the players with the lowest condition. Not worried too much about match rating or anything like that. Let's get those fresh legs out there. Let's throw a demand more shout in as well. And we've got possession here. Alvarez just exchanges passes with the other Alvarez, the overlapping fullback. And Ekerman has gone through him a bit late on. And it's, they're going to go down to 10 men. I didn't, it didn't look like that bad a challenge, to be honest, in the 2D highlight that we're looking at. Munifo here in possession, though. Now can we turn the screws against 10 men? Mateus, edge of the area. Can he get a strike off? Goes himself, gets the ball back. Alvarez finds Moya, pinballs around, and then Alvarez has gone through Sriracho. Now Sriracho could be... Okay, we're down to 10 men as well. That is ridiculous. What has happened? All right, let's just switch to our possession-based style. And ill-discipline is killing us on this one. Zaragoza is going to move to the right-hand side, and we're just going to play without a number 10 for a little bit. Let's throw a demand more shout out there. Both sides now down to 10 men, but they're still chasing the game. So you'd think that would allow us to... Drop that number 10 position and still have three guys forward at most opportunities to try and counter-attack. All right, we're into the last 10 minutes here. We're going to throw a demand more shout in. And time is just whittling away. And Toleris haven't really been able to create anything, nor are they committing men forward, despite it being 10v10. Two additional minutes to be added on. We're going to add a second trophy. Come on, the referee calls full time. We don't see the post-match there. How did we do that on a square pitch, by the way? Congratulations, that was a good performance, lads. Everyone seemed to have responded positively, which is fantastic. Even the bench players are pretty happy at the moment, which is great. And then Copa Argentina, River lift the Copa Argentina as well. Jeremiah Suarez, our goalkeeper got the man of the match award. 7.6 match rating and six shots saved. I don't feel like they had that many chances in the game as we saw it. 
Where was that game played? Quilmes? Owned by Quilmes. So it wasn't Talaris' home ground. It was just some weird square pitch that a team from the Argentine second division play out of. I'm not sure why it was hosted there. If you know, let me know in the comment section. It says neutral venue, but yeah, seems like a weird stadium for them to pick. And we do celebrate a double. It is our fourth Copa Argentina title in the last seven years, which is a fairly impressive effort. Most of those wins were prior to us actually arriving at the club, to be fair. 15 times in 28 years for River Plate in the Copa Argentina. That is fairly dominant. And it's another trophy. I don't have any graphic to show you that one, but you guys get it, you understand. So I think what we're going to do differently, usually after we win a continental title, we effectively would just kind of like quit the job then and there and move on. I think I'm going to see out the season just to get us through to May, just to see if we can actually go on and kind of win the league title, get that domestic treble. We might jump back at the close of the May season. And then basically from June, we've got the top five European leagues uh, being added. And then we've also got, you know, like Brazil and Uruguay and eventually Argentina disappearing just to keep the database clicking along as best it can. So I think that's what we'll bring you guys in next episode. We'll finish off this season, let you guys know how it all played out. We'll resign from our role at the end of the league season and then potentially we'll go through our job search and see what sort of roles come up for us in Europe. But you guys will have to tune into that one to check that out. Oh, I get to do it on the goodbye tab as well. All right, let's quickly just get rid of this filter. All right, so we get to make that one fully colored now as well. Just one more. Old Big Ears is really the only one that we've kind of got to go after now. If you want to help celebrate us getting this fourth continental title, please drop a like on this video. Let's just try and get to 10 likes. That would be awesome. It helps the channel grow a little bit further. Subscribe to the channel if you want to be kept up to date on this series and future FM22 content as we kind of work through how that's going to look on the channel. But really, more than anything, I just appreciate the continued support you guys have given this. I appreciate you all watching. That is the part that means the most to me. But as always, I've been Sean. I'll see you all again in the mixer. I'm exhausted. I'm not going to lie.